Hello everyone, welcome back to my workbench up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway. I need to build some more point motors for the new track I've just laid. The point motors I've been using so far are a Merg kit using a cheap 9G servo to make a budget friendly slow action point motor. When I was at the EM Gauge Society show I saw these Dingo servo mounts. I was interested and picked one up for evaluation. There are a lot of variations of these available for different things, including some with multiple servos clustered together to operate complex multi-arm signals. This is the basic point motor version. Unlike the Merg kit, the instructions for these are not printed and included with the kit, but must be downloaded. You could print them yourself, I've chosen to just put it on my tablet here. Whilst it feels odd on the first one, having several copies of the Merg instructions kicking around, some of which have never been read, I do understand why this choice has been made. Dingo servo mounts are folded up from aluminium sheet. Getting the fold square and each side flat after folding is very important. They are slotted to help the fold go in the right place and the aluminium is soft so the bends can be put in pretty easily with only finger pressure. Unfortunately, because it's so soft, it's also easy to accidentally introduce a bend into the aluminium where you don't want it, and your biggest challenge will be keeping the rest of it flat when making a bend. The best tool for this would be a miniature sheet metal break. If you have one of these, folding this up will be an absolute breeze. Like most models though, I don't happen to have one of those to hand. I'm bending the aluminium over the edge of my workbench which because it's still pretty fresh and new has a nice sharp square edge still. With the benefit of hindsight, clamping the metal with a square block on what will be the inside of the fold, a flat block on the outside and pressing the folded edge flat with a third block would be the best method as I did have problems keeping the sides flat. All the screws you need for assembly are provided but there are several different types so make sure you're using the right ones at each step. The aluminium sheet has been tapped with the appropriate threads, but remember it's soft aluminium. If you were to get something cross-threaded and proceed with force, or even use a screw with the wrong thread, you'd strip the threads out of the aluminium pretty easily. Drive through the baseboard is achieved by securing the provided stiff piece of wire under the heads of three screws. This can be done vertically, ideal for mounting directly underneath a tie bar, or horizontally, ideal for surface mounting next to a tie bar. Frog polarity switching is provided with two micro switches mounted one on each side, which are contacted at maximum throw. The Dingo servo mount converts the rotational movement of the servo into horizontal sliding movement straight away, whereas the Merg design is all about angles and arcs. Getting this horizontal sliding motion smooth requires nice, flat, parallel sides, which depends on getting the folds done really well. The throw of the finished motor can be adjusted by choosing where in the servo arm to put the screw which drives the sliding piece. This can be adjusted after the motor is built if necessary, and is a clever design feature. Once completed, the servo arm is well inside the motor. This means it's safe from any accidental knocks, but if you do want to manually operate it for any reason, it's difficult to do so. That's not the case with the Merg version, where the servo arm is out in the open and can be manually moved quite easily. In comparison, the Merg kit is primarily 3D printed plastic. There's no folding to do, however there are a few other things to watch out for while assembling it. There are three pieces that need assembling, the frame, the anchor for the piano wire, and the operating arm. 
Separate them from the fret and clean up any flashing exactly as you would with any normal plastic kit. If you are enjoying this video or finding it useful, hit the like button. If you want to see more of my layout or the stock I run on it, hit the subscribe button. If you have a question, comment or suggestion, write it in the comment section below. When fitting the main arm, there's a nylock nut which is retained in a hexagonal hole in the 3D printed main piece. Normally this goes together pretty smoothly, but occasionally you get a nylock nut which has more drag than normal, and if the 3D printed part has the hole with a little bit too much slack, the nut ends up rotating. When you do get one like this, it can be a pain to assemble, as holding the nut in position is very difficult. The piano wire used to operate the point is provided in three lengths for a kit with six motors, which means you must cut each of the lengths of piano wire in half. This needs a big pair of side cutters that you don't care too much about the condition of afterwards, as piano wire is very hard. Bending the piano wire is easy with just a pair of pliers. The position of this bend, however, is critical. This is what sets how far up out of the baseboard the wire will protrude. You need enough to get through the tie bar, but not protrude enough to hit anything above the track. If you do bend it in the wrong place, it can be straightened and rebent. This is something I've done a few times. I find this easier than cutting the end of the piano wire above the baseboard. Both motors use the same micro switch contact method for frog polarity switching. Although unlike the Dingo servo mount, the Merg design has a pivot in the centre. This means it has the switches on the opposite side. The red wire goes to the switch on the other side of the track to where the red droppers are. Both of these took between 15 and 20 minutes to build. I wouldn't say one is any more complex to build than the other, they're just different. They are very different though, and you may find that one or other style suits you better to assemble. The Dingo servo mount has an easy to adjust drive height. Loosen the screws, slide the wire to the desired height and retighten. You can also easily drive sideways by using one different screw position and mounting the wire sideways on top of the slide. On the Merg motor, adjusting the height of the wire requires straightening and rebending the piano wire, and driving sideways requires an add on adapter. Adding extra switches to the Dingo servo mount is possible, two would go side by side here. However, that would require sourcing longer screws, and you've got to match the thread to the ones they provide if you still want to use their mounting method. The Merg motors just need extra micro switches adding, as the provided screws are already long enough to take several. I have needed to make use of this in the past. The motors installed on the double junction needed four micro switches on each motor, but it's an admittedly rare case. On the flip side, the Dingo servo mount not having overly long screws means the mounting holes are more easily accessible. There's nothing in the way of getting a large screwdriver up here when mounting the motor on the underside of the baseboard. The Merg motor is not so simple. The overlong screws do tend to get in the way. I found adjusting them fully out before installation and only moving them in afterwards to be the best workaround here, but trimming the screws or sourcing shorter ones would solve this properly. I have managed to break the foot off a Merg mount before. I don't know if I can solely attribute this to a 3D printing fail, or if the limited screwdriver access was a contributing factor. Adjusting the switches so they activate at the right part of the throw is similar on both motors. Set the motor to the end of travel, loosen the screws, slide the switch in until the switch activates, and retighten. Repeat for both sides. It's easy when bending the two wings up on the Dingo servo mount to accidentally introduce a bend in the aluminium across here between the hole for the servo and the edge of the mount. If this happens, it will make the slide bend and the motor won't work properly. If you discover this once it is built, it is difficult to flatten out without completely dismantling the motor. Check for flatness across here early in construction. The Dingo mount is less tall overall, which means less clearance to layers below is necessary. The trade-off is the servo is closer to the baseboard, which means replacing just the servo while leaving the mount installed on the baseboard is more tricky than with the Merg motor. Yes, I have had to do that before. Cheap servos are not 100% reliable. The Dingo mount is a little narrower overall, but not by a huge amount. What it is is much more square than the Merg mount. There are going to be places where one would mount more easily than the other and vice versa. The non-square shape of the Merg mount can be exploited to drive two points with tie bars next to each other by simply turning one of the point motors around and staggering them on the baseboard. This could not be achieved with the Dingo mount because the slide is the widest part. 
Finally, the Dingo Servo Mount is, even at the show special price I picked this one up at, about twice the cost of the Merg Mount. This is even more significant if you don't happen to need the micro switches, as you can buy the Merg Mounts without them. I do like the Dingo Servo Mount, it's a good bit of kit, but I also like the Merg one too. I'm not going to switch over to the Dingo Mount from here on out, but I certainly will keep this one around to give me another option if I find a space that's difficult to mount a Merg one in. For example, in the station throat, where there are lots of points in close proximity. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of point motors to install on this part of the layout. See you next time, up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.